Yeah, well, does a win like that uh, change the Kings' thinking at all when it comes to the deadline? What is their thinking here? Uh, and what is the deadline looking like? Uh, who's available? Let's find out. Nice enough to join us, senior NBA reporter at Yahoo, Jake Fisher. He's also written a book, which I've read. And if you're an NBA fan, I can definitely recommend Built to Lose, How the NBA's Tanking Era Changed the League Forever. Jake, welcome to the show. Uh, of all the names we're hearing of players who could be available, which ones are really the most likely to be going somewhere before the deadline? Thanks for having me, first of all, guys. I think, you know, I'm working on a story right now, typing away at my desk before you guys called for my next notebook at Yahoo. And I, th I think most of the conversation after Toronto traded OG Ananobi to New York this week has been really centered around the next big, you know, player in Toronto and Pascal Siakam. And a lot of attention is being paid now to Atlanta as well with DeJounte Murray, where He's really been, I think, at the center of a lot of these exploratory preliminary conversations right now. I mean, the Hawks, one executive told me earlier today, are, are one of the most like aggressive, forthcoming, all right, we would do this right now on the phone teams around the league. Mm. And it's just going to be a matter of seeing what kind of comes together in the next month or so before February. Jake Fisher, Yahoo Sports, joining us. Jake, I, I know you wrote... Uh, or, or, or there's a video transcript of you a couple of weeks ago talking about uh, NBA trade candidates to watch. And one person you mentioned was Lowry Markkinen. I always maintain that I just don't get why they would move on from him. What's the latest on Lowry and what are you hearing about that? It's a great question. I did not mention him in the first answer because after his name was all over the place before December 15th, that you know, window where most players who sign contracts this summer have now been able to uh, be, be available to be moved. And ever since then, I mean, the word got pretty loud and was definitely communicated by Utah to other teams that their asking price for him would be something in the same status here of what Rudy Gobert went to Minnesota and Donovan Mitchell wow. to Cleveland, which brought Larry Markman back, you know, five first round pick type stuff. So. Look, there's still the possibility that Oklahoma City or some team that is willing to draft capital just decides to say, screw it. He's our guy. Let's go get him. But right now, he wants to be there. He's told Utah that he wants to be there. There's definitely the possibility he could both renegotiate and extend his contract during the season after the trade deadline if the Jazz are able to make other moves and open up some cap space. He could just sign an extension uh, after next season once he becomes eligible uh, for an even higher portion of the cap. But right now, people are just kind of expecting Larry Martin to hang pat with the Jazz and that the Jazz do want to keep him. We're talking trades with uh, Jake Fisher, senior NBA reporter at Yahoo. Uh, given what we know about what it's going to take to get a big-name player from his current team, given what we know about the Kings and what they have available in terms of assets, do you think the Kings have a realistic shot at an upgrade of any significance if that's what they decide to pursue? Yeah, I think the Kings have a lot of different options on their table to get a little bit better. You know, Harrison Barnes' name is definitely one that's come up, I think, in every single trade window dating back to when Sacramento first acquired him. There was a while there where he was kind of like a chip that the Kings were kind of throwing out there for, you know, to be a seller. But right now, like I remember a couple of years ago, they were, there was talk about, you know, could they get two first round picks from Boston to get him? I forget which season exactly that was. Right now, it sounds like he'd be more of a piece that they would go use to buy, like to try to see if they could upgrade. And they gave him this big four year, 80 plus million dollar deal this summer, but his shooting has definitely fallen off. I think the continued emergence of Keegan Murray allows them to maybe look at uh, options there. Jake, you know, one of the things that, that I'm trying to figure out regarding the Kings is what exactly are they looking for? What exactly do they need? You know, we've talked with fans out here on our show. They throw up a big name, Levine, Siakam, you know, but then I have a thought, well, they're hoping Keegan Murray takes that lead. Any idea what the Kings would be looking for out there on the open market? Yeah, they, they were described to me as one of the teams most aggressive and active in trying to get OG Ananobi 
I think Indiana was the proverbial number two that finished behind New York. And Sacramento, I think, was right there. Hmm. I think there's still a team that's being considered for Pascal Siakam right now. The Levine wow. stuff, you know, to me, I'm crediting that more to Monte McNair being someone who's come from the Daryl Morey tree in Houston, where anytime a star player becomes available, you make the call and you poke your head in and, and, and kind of keep yourself at least involved thinking, you know, what opportunity might present itself? How can we even get involved in something on the margins if it becomes a two or three team deal? And I think that's a situation that Levine and his representation in clutch sports looked at and circled and, and liked because, you know, they have a pretty good situation there with Darren Fox already running the show. So I think that was more of an exploratory thing than anything else, but they do seem to be pretty attached to names of front court players, you know, guys who would in theory fill Harrison Barnes' spot, you know, the Pascals, the OGs. I don't really see a ton of other players like that right now on the board, but one to keep an eye on could be someone like Jeremy Grant in Portland. Mm. Jake Ooh. Fisher with us uh, from Yahoo. Jake, in your mind, which team or teams need to make a, a move this year before the deadline, or which teams feel they're in position where, and you mentioned a few already, which teams feel like we have to do something now? Indiana seems to maybe be one of those teams. Indiana, definitely. Although they have this top 10 pick in Jairus Walker out of Houston, who kind of the talk of the G League showcase when I was down there in Orlando, who just like isn't playing at all. It's kind of similar to Keegan Murray, although Keegan's obviously in the starting lineup and he's putting up 40 points you know, almost every night now, obviously hyperbole. But this like young combo forward that in theory is the bookend of you know, a, a starting lineup that they already have, you know, the Pacers have Tyrese Albert and Miles Turner, similar to how Sacramento has De'Aaron Fox and, and, and Domas. So it's it's a little curious to me why the Pacers are being so aggressive and looking at Foreman, especially after acquiring Obi Toppin this summer too. But they just continue to be linked to every power forward from OG and Pascal to Tobias Harris in Philadelphia. I mean, I'm sure they, they've had internal talks about Harrison Barnes just because it seems like Sacramento really is doing a, a, a decent job of calling around on him. So, But the Pacers do seem pretty set on making some type of move, especially because they've got 15 guys, basically, and they could perhaps benefit from some type of consolidation trade. Yeah, Jake Fisher joining us, Yahoo Sports. Jake, you know, uh, I'm hearing all the rumblings out of L.A. about Darvin Ham and, and his future, and, you know, obviously they're underachieving so far this year. How active do you think the Lakers will be? And might a player like Rui Hachimura be able to be picked off or something like that for Sacramento? I think so, but I think he's going to be more of an outgoing piece for the Lakers for someone that they think is really upgrading their, their team and making them closer to a championship team. I, I don't know if the Kings really have a player like that that they're willing to give up right now. I right. think when it comes to the Lakers – Rui plus D'Angelo Russell plus a first-round pick is pretty much the best outgoing deal from a salary standpoint, from a young player standpoint with theoretical untapped potential that they're going to be able to put out there. But I just I am skeptical that they're going to be able to get anyone of real consequence without putting Austin Reeves on the table. That's kind of been the impression that I've gotten from talking to people from other front offices. So they're going to have to hope that Chicago, when it, you know, the, the buzzer's coming up on February 8th. They don't really have much out there, and that offers enough to get Zach Levine. But you know, when I asked, you know, DeJounte Murray's another clutch client. When I asked Atlanta, one person there, but I asked one person there yesterday, you know, what the viability of DeJounte to LA was. And he said to me, well, I would need Austin Reeves back. And that's something that the Lakers right now have shown no interest in doing. Right. All right. Uh, Jake Fisher from Yahoo. Uh, before we let you go, Jake, just want to clarify here for the benefit of Kings fans. If I, if we understood you right, I think you said you believe the Kings could be in still on Siakam, could be. Yeah. And and if that's true, how many other teams do you think are actively in talks for Siakam right now as we speak? Active, not so sure because it does seem like a ton of teams are still kind of holding their cards. But uh -huh. Indiana, Sacramento, Detroit are three teams that I would definitely keep an eye on for him. 
All right. Thank Good you. Stuff. Yeah. Again, uh, the book, Built to Lose, How the NBA's Tanking Era Changed the League Forever. I've read it. I can recommend it. Uh, Jake Fisher. Thanks for your time, Jake. We appreciate it. Hope to talk to you again soon. Appreciate you guys. All right, Jake. Okay. Thanks, How about man. that? Ask Al Siaco. Right. We, we, we've been talking about some B-level, C-level guys, and it sounds like Monty might be interested in trying to Swing for the fences. Yeah. How do we feel about that? Yeah. You buying that, that they were maybe uh, in on Ananobi? Yeah, I think so. I, I wow. think. But, you know, the problem, we've talked about it. If I'm Toronto, the first guy I want is Keegan Murray. Right. You know, look at what they got. Yeah. R.J. Barrett well. and quickly, two young players. That's clearly what they wanted back in return. Mm -hmm. uh, we will get to the phones when we come back. Thank you for your patience. 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. Again, basking in the afterglow of that incredible win. And as Kyle mentioned to our guest here, it is a glorious time to be a Laker hater. That's next <laughs> year with the Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports.